Welcome to the course, Basic Vector Design Principles. Let's get started. I understand this is a sample project for use in John's portfolio and is not really a complete course on vector design principles. Module Overview. This course will help you understand the benefits and basic principles of vector design. Why is it important to learn vector design? With the rising popularity of working and learning from home, the increase in conducting business online, and the recent boom in internet use in general, there's a greater call for web design, online education, and e-commerce. With these increases in digital presence, comes a higher demand for digital content. Objectives. After you've completed this module, you'll be able to 1. Discern the difference between vector and raster design. 2. Understand some of the benefits of designing with vectors. And 3. Explain the importance of a proper workspace to get started in vector design. Let's get started. Number 1. Raster versus vector design. There are two ways to create digital designs, raster and vector. One main difference between them is how they're created by the software you use to draw. Raster graphics are created by coloring pixels on a pre-designated digital space. Vector graphics are created by using mathematics to create lines and shapes. So what's the difference? The principal basis of their creation determines how they can be manipulated and used. For vector graphics, vector-based objects are dynamic, and when scaled up, they will look the same. In vector graphic design, the properties of entire shapes, lines, and groups of objects can be changed at once. In raster designs, raster images are static, and objects look pixelated when you scale them up. To modify raster designs, pixels must be recolored, replaced, masked, or redrawn, not simply modified. Here's an example of the graphical difference. Enlarging and scaling up raster designs can lead to pixelated images and lettering. The difference is that vector designs use mathematical paths and vertices to create objects. So even when scaled up, they look the same. Let's check your knowledge. When changing a vector image, it would be easier to change the shape and size of objects than changing them in a raster image because Vector illustrations use mathematical objects and vertices to create images Vector illustrations are drawn with pixels Vector designs are drawn on paper Or vector designs have no attachment to the JPEG file If you answered A, vector designs use mathematical objects and vertices to create images you were right. Good job. Let's move on to our next section, Benefits of Vector Design. Because vector designs are mathematically based, they're infinitely scalable. Since vector-based objects and lines are created with vertices, they can be stretched, modified, and duplicated as elements within an image. Here are some of the benefits. You can modify shapes. Since vectors are not merely pixels in a grid, shapes can be modified with precise changes. And you can modify lines and curves, too, with precision. Modifying lines and shapes is very easy because you can include manipulating line widths and styles with these vector objects. You can even create symbols and object libraries. Vector objects can be grouped into reusable icons and object libraries since they act as independent elements within images. True or false? Vector images have an advantage over raster images in that the parts of vector images are all individual, modifiable elements with their own properties. If you answered true, you were right. Good job! Step 3. Steps to setting up an illustration workspace. Now that you know what vector illustration is and what some of the benefits are, it's time to set up a workspace to learn to draw. Establishing a workspace is important, and the first thing you need to do to do this is to make sure you're ready before you even begin drawing. You need to gather the tools you need. 
You'll need a drawing device, such as a computer or an iPad. You'll need some software in which to draw, such as Adobe Illustrator or Affinity Designer. And you need a, a nice workspace, a creative and comfortable, well-lit, clean workspace that inspires your creativity. Let's discuss workspaces. On this next slide, we're going to explore a typical living room. Be sure we click on all the icons to discover important tips on choosing a workspace. Let's take a look. Be mindful of light sources, as too much light can cause a glare on your screen. Be wary of facing televisions to avoid distractions. If you get too comfortable, you might fall asleep instead of being productive. Are your resources nearby? You might want reference books, notepads, and writing utensils close by. Having a dedicated space with adequate lighting and a flat surface is best. If you play music, be sure it helps and does not hinder your production. Knowledge check. Having the right tools and an inspiring workspace are the first steps to creating vector designs. What's one main concern when setting up your workspace according to the virtual tour we just took? Staying hydrated is important when working. Consider light sources to avoid glare on your screen. Consider your distance to the bathroom. Or plants give your workspace a natural feeling. If you answered B, you should consider light sources to avoid glare on your screen, you are right. While these other things might contribute to a great workspace, definitely need to avoid glare from light sources. As an overview, first we examine the difference between vector and raster design. Secondly, we explored some of the benefits of designing with vectors. And finally, we learned how to choose a great workspace. Thank you for visiting my portfolio project. I truly believe there's a huge difference between having to learn something and wanting to learn it. Congratulations, you made it. Thank you for checking out this portfolio project and thank you for making it to the end.